and welcome back to the Vaughn Test Kitchen. Today we are going to finish up our croissants and pan au chocolat. So I have the dough that I made in my prior videos. It's been resting overnight in the refrigerator and we're ready to continue. So you could use this entire batch of dough for classic croissants or you could use the entire batch for pan au chocolat, but I'm going to split it in half and do both. As you can see, it rose a little in the fridge overnight. I'm going to cut it in half to make and keep one half here on the bench for making the croissants and the other half I'll put in the refrigerator and we'll come back in our next video and make the pan au chocolat. Okay, so we have half of a recipe of croissant dough and we're going to roll it out before we cut and shape the classic croissants. So I'll put on my bench flour so that the dough doesn't stick. and we will roll it out. Since we're using a half recipe of dough, we'll be rolling this out to eight and a half inches this way by 26 and a half inches this way. We'll just have one long strip that we'll cut into croissants. If you use an entire batch of dough to make classic croissants, you would still roll it out 26 and a half inches this direction, but you'd roll it out 17 inches in this direction you'd cut it into two strips and make, and each of them you'd make, you'd cut the croissants from. So let's get this rolled out. And if it's a little firm when you first take it out of the fridge, you can kind of bang it a little to help it start to roll out. And as usual, we're going to be checking that it's not sticking. It tends to be a little harder to roll it out at this stage because it's cold. It's been in the refrigerator overnight. But just keep at it and you'll get it rolled out to the dimensions that you need. Okay, now we've got it just about to size. It's a little bit longer than it should be and a little bit wider, but it's close enough. You don't want to go crazy. If it's an inch or so larger in either direction, you're fine. You just don't want to be several inches. Um, the first thing that we are going to do is cut off a little strip on each edge to open up those layers. This is one of the reasons if it's a little long, it's not a big deal. And as a matter of fact, we can check the dimensions and that's perfect once I trimmed. Now we'll do that at the, on the uh, top edge. Okay, and just to see where we're at, we've still got quite a bit that we can do here. So I, I can actually cut off the section that's dipping on the edge. That will help straighten everything out well. And as I've said before, you don't have to throw these away. You can make little cinnamon rolls or something like that with it. So now we have our length of dough that is, after cutting, it's approximately 26 inches by 8 inches. And we are ready to mark and cut out our croissant shape. So what you'll do, you're going to be using this full sheet. You will not be cutting it lengthwise. 
if you're making a full batch and you you have rolled it to 17 inches in this direction, you will cut it in half before you start cutting your, your croissants. So you'll need just a little knife and starting from the bottom left, you'll mark at the two inch mark and then every four inches. So I've got two inches, six inches, 10 inches, 14 inches, 18 inches, and four inches. We have a little bit um, of two inches left on that side. Then we're going to do the same on the top, but the opposite. So we're going to measure over, we're going to start with the right side, measure two inches, and then every four inches. Six, 10, 14, 18, 4 and then the remaining amount. So now I'm going to match up diagonally my notches. So I'm going to go from here here to here, make a diagonal cut with my pizza cutter, then Go to the next one for the other diagonal cut. And then keep going from that one to the next notch at the bottom. And then that one to the next notch at the top. and so on until you have cut out all of your croissants. This one will just be from the edge. And this little bit at the end you could use for a little mini croissant if you wanted, but it will bake much faster than the regular size, so I'm just going to add it to my scrap pile. So now we've ended up with two, four, six, eight, ten croissants. You, you will likely get somewhere between ten and twelve out of this batch. Okay, so now we just have triangles. We need to turn them into croissants. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make a little notch at the base of each piece of dough. By the way, if you wanted to make mini, a whole batch of mini croissants, the basic ratio is that the base should be half the length of the width, uh, of the top. So the base in these are four inches and then we've met and then it's eight inches. If you were going to make mini, you could do two inches and four inches. Okay, so I've cut little little notches at the bottom of each. Then what I'm going to do is spread it out so it looks a little bit like the Eiffel Tower. So I spread that out and then I start rolling. Once it's rolled a little bit and if there's too much flour on them, go ahead and get the flour off. Once I start rolling, I'm going to pull that tip out as I roll. And then when you're done, and again, brush off any excess flour, you should have a beautifully rolled croissant like this that you can put on 
your baking sheet that has been lined with parch pa parchment paper. All right, I'll do that again for you. Pull out the sides to make the Eiffel Tower. Start your roll. Once you start to roll it, pull out the tip to stretch it. Keep rolling. Put less pressure on the tip as you get further along. And then you get to the end, a beautifully rolled croissant. You may be wondering why I'm making these straight rather than curved around. You see some where they are almost, the ends are almost touching each other and it's almost circular. Um, you'll see both styles in France, um, straight and curved. I've heard different uh, reasons for that. Some say that croissants are supposed to be made with all butter, but the reality is some of them are made with margarine, even in France, or a mixture. I've heard it said that straight would be all butter, the, the more circular ones would be a combination of butter and margarine. I've heard the opposite, and I've heard it doesn't make any difference. It's what the baker prefers. Personally, I like the straight ones better. I, I, I think they look prettier. I think they um, are easier if you want to use them for something different, like after they're baked and cooled to slice them and make a, a sandwich on them. So I make all mine straight. Well, I will finish these up and when I come back, we will make our pan au chocolat.